Well, I think that's definitely the case. We've had uh, we've had good sized graduating groups uh, the last you know three years, and uh, you're, that's always been the big question. At the next group, uh, you better be ready to step up. It's your turn. Uh, and they've done well at their level of football, at, at, you know, whether it be junior varsity or what have you, but they've been uh, able to step up and uh, we've been able to uh, get close to the guys who graduated and uh, that's going to be pr pretty much the same uh, general tone we have this year as well, even though we've got more than uh, a few more uh, shoes to fill. But uh, you know, I think we've got kids that are up to the challenge and are ready to go. Offensively, you lose about everything. How important is it that they know the scheme and what goes on? How important is that? Well, I, I think just coming back, understanding your basic schemes and everything is uh, keeping some continuity is part of the reason you're able to uh, generate some guys that fill voids of kids who graduate because um, if you want that next guy to get close to the, with the guy who graduated, um, it's all, you know, mentally they can jump right in there and, and get better each week at the same things that they were doing the year before, the year before that, uh, I think is extremely helpful. And, uh, you know, it's not something new all the time for them. Will you try and maybe get your starting lineup maybe earlier so they get their reps at the positions early so they have a lot before the season starts? I think generally you can uh, narrow down a lot of different spots early. Um, you have some competition at different spots. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, it's good to have more or less a healthy competition too because that's just making another kid work a little bit harder um, when you have a little extra competition other than just trying to get better in general. Talk to me about your defense. Uh, not a lot returns there either. Talk to me about that a little bit. Well, we return our defensive line, uh, our starters from last year's defensive line, um, and uh, Caleb Davidson and Bodie Eaglin and Tyler Smith and uh, Derek Sylvester played some in there as well. Uh, you know, that's that's a good place to have, though. I mean, you're starting up front, guys in your trenches. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll lose quite a few linebackers. We lose uh, our secondary. Um, but our, our next guys have got to you know, be ready like the previous group step up and get to the challenge. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident our, uh, our next group uh, is going to uh, be gritty enough to try to get things done. We've got some extremely good kids that left, but um, we can't woe as me and, and move on. I mean, we've got to, uh, uh, we've got to continue uh, trying to get better and just let these kids understand it's their turn now. There's been a lot of competition for them the last couple, three years. And if you're third on a depth chart, and now you've been second on a depth chart, uh, it's been tough to get in there. And uh, now it's your turn to get in there, and uh, it's your, kind of your time. It's time to go out and take care of business. You haven't lost a regular season game in three years. You've built quite a program in the tradition. This group will want to be, doesn't want to be the group that uh, lets things down. So that'll give them a little motivation too, won't it? Right. We've got a group of like 13 seniors. Uh, and those kids have gone, you know, three years. Uh, they'd like to, uh, you know, go through their whole high school career and, uh, and you know, do, you know, continue on with the, some of the things that we've been doing and, and, and go further as well changes in your schedule a little bit. You always have trouble scheduling people. Uh, some different teams are sharing a schedule here. Well, uh, we've got, it always seems there's, always, you know, something happens different here. We had to have a bye the last couple of years, but we've got that taken care of. Um, and then Albany, who was on our schedule, they moved to eight-man football. So um, they were a Grand River Conference team. And so, which is our conference just to the west of us here. So we were able to find, a, a, you know, just luckily someone you didn't have to drive clear across the straight state to find, like some people, to try to find some non-conference games. So we were able to get King City in week two. And then uh, we were able to play Highland uh, later in the year. I think it's week nine. As far as your conference goes, uh, 
a lot of teams have gotten better should be a dog fight. You know, there's a lot of, you know, parity. I think each team has different strengths. They lose certain people. Um, you know, it, it, every team loses some key people, but uh, it'll come down to just staying healthy, um, who's getting better each week, and, uh, you know, what group retools their kids the best from what they've lost. And uh, But uh, I, I look for a very competitive uh uh, conference play. I think uh, you know teams are like, like you said are, are getting better and better, and uh, you know it's it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. It'll come down to defense and uh, special teams and just taking care of the football on offense. Fall practice is really important, but it really will be important for you guys because every minute is precious with all these new people in new positions, right? Well, uh, yeah. I mean. We've we've tried to cut into that dent quite a bit this summer, um, with different camps and things that we do. So, uh, but absolutely, I mean, we've got to uh, um, every minute of every uh, and some and the amount of time you can practice right now through Missouri State High School is uh, um, key as well. So you've got to look at the new rules that we put in place last year, take advantage of every minute and. Uh, and go from there. So, um, you know, we're not going to try to, you know, we're going to go by the rule, go ready, get them ready to go, and just keep trying to get better each day. Since they started summer football in the state of Missouri, uh, you haven't done it for a while. You like it? Don't like it? Your thoughts about it? Oh, I like it. I mean, it's uh, summertime can be a bad time for uh, kids to, uh, I want them to enjoy some free time from school. Um, and teachers and kids as well need a little bit of, to recharge their battery. But with that being said, though, kids have, uh, you know, and keep them, uh, keep them involved in something. Uh, progress as far as, uh, you know, getting better. I think a lot of the problems fell. You had a couple weeks of camp the way it used to be set up. Uh, seven day, two cycles of seven days or whatever. Um, but if you were in a league, you could practice. Well, that helped softball. That helped basketball. They could go to as many shootouts, and they could go to as many softball tournaments or even baseball tournaments that somebody wanted to go to. And so, and then once you got to the fall, what ended up happening was you had uh, fall sports, softball, football, cheerleading. They had a August 1st till the start of practice uh, dead period built in anyway but the winter sports and everything didn't have one so then you ran into athletes uh, the weekend before two a day started they'd be at a baseball or a, a basketball shootout somewhere and then they twist an ankle roll a knee and then of course you know then you have problems within the uh, you know your football coaches are probably excited that they weren't you know they were that's sarcasm but they you know that happening before football started so uh, basically, football only has so many X number, you know, days, just basically two weeks. And everybody else, if they were in a per se league, could do practice in the gym, do whatever they wanted. So when they went to the 25 contact day, I think 25 days is plenty. Um, and they've got 25 in each sport. So you could really, uh, it really doesn't change basketball much. It really doesn't change, you know. If it changes those sports, it takes days away from them more than anything. So if you've got a multi-sport athlete, you take a girl that plays softball, basketball, she's uh, they're limited on the amount of days that they can do it with their team. Mylon Jamboree, that's always the first thing we you know, show up at in the fall. Uh, should be, we got good teams here again this year? Yeah, we have our same teams that we have uh, coming in. To my knowledge, it hasn't changed. Uh, at the same time, we are having a softball jamboree earlier that afternoon, as soon as like school's out, with the same teams. So that'll be kind of neat. I think it's Knox County, Princeton, uh, Putnam, and uh, of course ourselves. So we'll have those same schools down below the hill for a softball jamboree that was at the 15th that Friday. August 15th, and then uh, about the time that would be over, it would come up here to, for the football jamboree. 
I want to say that softball jamboree is probably a four o'clock deal. None of us are in school at that time, so I would say it's somewhere, somewhere in that area. It might be five o'clock too, Fred. I'm not sure. You're adding your crowd and concession sales at the same time. Yeah. Well, I I, I think it's important to uh, our softball coach, Coach Dotson. He's my assistant in baseball, and uh, not only do I want to you know support him, but you know, we want to support all our athletes and all our kids. We have them in class. We have them in the weight room. Uh, we want we see how hard they work. We want to see them do well. We know our coaches work hard and do well too. And so, I think that's unique that softball and baseball are starting those jamborees. So, as well. So we thought since we were having it that Friday, and it would be neat to to do it that way to get the same school softball teams in town here earlier, and so people can kind of double dip different sports one night of you know in the fall here starting for uh, athletics and get things rolling.